McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode two of this Hamilton Tigers franchise mode. This lottery legends on NHL 20. Today we are going to be jumping into the 2019/20 season. We're not going to get through the entire thing, but we are going to try to get through at least three or four months of the season. And yeah, uh, we're going to see how that goes. So. So, I mean, if you missed last episode, go check it out. There should be a card somewhere around the top corner here, but we do have um, a couple months to get through at least here. So we're starting in October. We're going to go four months into the future. So we're going to go up to January, and uh, we're going to see how this goes so instantly we have an injury that is uh that's awesome you gotta love that when you know i turn injuries down to 15 percent and it just uh instantly injures us so honestly i'm kind of hoping our team can go for a higher and lottery pick i'm not expecting a lot of first season success here uh, with this team just because you know it's a, an expansion team we're not expecting a lot out of them anyways so hopefully we can land some players that uh, that actually turn out or can actually benefit or be a benefit to this franchise in the future because as of right now I mean we started off one and two but a lot of these uh, draft picks really are not going to make a difference in the long run. So actually, I forgot to do one thing here, guys, and that would be um, going in and just changing the setting here for injuries because um, right now, yes, we have the injury sliders adjusted, but there's also another setting in here that I... I actually missed. I believe it's in rules. I'm not entirely sure. Um, playable. Yeah, we want fully healed on that. So that's the only other um, option I'm going to change there. So yeah, that was the only other change. We're going to get back into the sim. You guys are just going to essentially just watch the sim because that's uh, that's how most of this episode is going to go. But uh, we're going to go all the way up to January in this episode, see how the team goes. And um, I guess it's just going to be me constantly adjusting the lines because uh, what's his name here? Adam Henrique just keeps getting injured. And I don't know why it didn't let me change that. Oh, and Paul Byron's got a broken nose. Nice. So, I mean, not a great start. We're 3-4 and four to start the season, 3-5. And, five. and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what I expected. I did trade away a lot of our bigger pieces, our better players. So, oh, Nashville's fired their coach. Let's see, we could have had Nashville's pick, but I decided against it. And um, maybe that was a bad decision. The Jets are 6-5 and five to start the year. Um Luke Leopold's back, okay. I know Luke Leopold's going to be a big piece for our team as we move into the future, but as of right now, like we really don't have a lot of other um a lot of other options in our team as far as forward depth and, you know, youth like that goes. I mean, you shouldn't expect that out of the start. Uh, I'm going to disagree. We already have Eric Stahl. Sorry, Parker Kern. I guess that's our coach's name, yeah. Alright, so Sissons is fully healed. Nice.
Oh, Brandon Carlo got injured. That's not great. Okay, come on, boys. Let's, uh, yeah, geez, Nashville's doing even worse than us. So that's, uh, that's pretty weak, to be honest. So Van Velde healed. Eric Stahl, we're going to try to persuade him so we don't have to change the lines. Okay, well, you need to figure this out then. Okay, somehow we beat the Oilers seven nothing. That's funny, <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Hopefully this. I mean, this team's probably gonna finish quite low. Ooh, see, Raquel looks like a monster as far as defenders go. I think he's actually gonna. He would fit our system really well, or for what we're trying to build, he would fit our system. Um, I'm more interested in guys like Burmistrov and um, like Viking Stad guys like that because. We really have no idea what kind of players they are. The computer-generated players actually tend, like, they tend to turn out pretty solid with their ratings and potential. So that's why I'm interested. Like Hervinen, never heard of him before. And then, yeah, mm. that's not not great. <laughs> Keep getting trade offers for Tristan Jari, but uh, yikes! Okay, so this team is just—you know—they're just falling apart as far as the injuries go. Somehow we're still getting wins, though. Twelve, fifteen, and three is not an awful record, but it's not great either. As far as the Atlantic goes, yeah, we're dead last in the Atlantic now. But am I that worried? No, not really, because the Senators are also a weak team. And, well, I mean, we aren't trying to, you know, we aren't trying to end up with a ton of um, ton of great prospects or anything like that. Or not great prospects. We're not trying to end up with a ton of points. We're trying to end up with great prospects. That's what I'm saying. So at the end of January, we are 16 or 17, 16, and 5 for our record. Um, our top scorer is Adam Henrique with 29 points in 32 games, all assists for the most part as well. And you know, 39 points, there's a lot of teams behind us still. Wow. If we were in any other division, we'd be doing just fine. But um, yeah, as of right now, I mean, we're 6 2 and 2 in our last 10. So the Tigers aren't even performing that poorly. It's just we are in a rather strong Atlantic division for sure. So Bruins are top there with 61. Out of the entire league, we're 22nd. Like we're not doing that bad. So maybe we end up trading um, a couple players here to improve our picks. Do something like that. Winnipeg's right on the edge of making the playoffs at the moment. But you know what? Like I'm I'm not expecting a lot out of this team for the first year or two. So honestly, if we can get some trade finders going here, see how our players are doing. Matsumoto, how has he done so far? Not bad, but not great. Uh, Leopold's grown at least two ratings, so that's really good. Um... Maybe we look for a trade for Giordano, see if anybody wants him. Doesn't look like it. 
What about, um, we can try Eric Stahl too. What about Eric Stahl? Who wants to trade their picks for Stahl? Just Nashville at this point. So that's not awesome. Um, Adam Fox, maybe. I'm just trust. I'm just testing out trade finders here. Lots of teams want to trade second rounders for Fox, but I would prefer a first rounder. So, hmm. Let's go through the proposed trades here and just check out the trade block. See who actually has first round picks up on the block. Avalanche do it's pretty much just all the teams that are actually doing well right now have their first rounders up Yeah, that's how it's gonna go for the most part here. Oh, never mind. Nashville's not smart Even though their pick is yeah frick. <laughs> So maybe we pick up their pick next year As well as like a second this year that would be That would be decently solid and then, like Eric Stahl in exchange, that's not going to go. The value is definitely too far off. Um, what about a guy like Demko, possibly? That might go right there. Okay, so they'd have to waive Demko to do so. Yeah, they have two good goalies there still. Let's try this. Oh, they will actually do that. Okay. So we could go stall and Demko in exchange for Nashville's first rounder next year, uh, second rounder this year, and uh, UC Saros. That's actually not terrible. I, I would take that. So let's do this and... Uh, doesn't get us a first this year gets us a second though so yeah unfortunately we trade away Eric Stahl but and that also sends our team into a rebuilding state so I mean that's where we are right now to be completely honest so let's go until the end of well where does the season end the season ends in April let's go till the end of February so beginning of March and uh, pretty much just to the trade deadline here and then I think more or less that'll be wrapping up this episode because i mean we could go through the entire season here somehow our team's still winning games um there are definitely worse teams in the league okay big loss to the uh to the jets there but i don't understand this game how you trade away players and then they still win um Thank you. I don't appreciate how my coach is constantly giving me a hard time for being a rebuilding team. Like, Sissons gets injured. Okay. Then do we proceed to actually lose some games here, or what's going on? Yeah, no, I'm not so interested in Lafreniere, to be completely honest. Like, I'd much rather look into a guy like Stefan Raquel. Or even like Burmistrov is not terrible. Um, Holtz looks okay. Viking stat. I get the feeling he's not going to be an elite. Get the feeling he's going to be a medium six, but he's going to be like. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have enough picks to land all of those guys, but. Yeah. Injured leg for Adam Fox. Jeez. I don't even know what's going on here with this team. This is so weird. So, another coach gets fired. Another coach gets fired. Oh, that was actually Anthony Duclair right there, but he's like a 26 year old high top six. So, yeah, 
Yeah, we'll see. All these teams want our picks, and we're not going to give them up. But at the same time, like, how is our team winning games still? I do not understand at all. And Robin Laner's injured, so that might be the turning point right there in our season if um if Laner is done then Yeah, if Laner's injured, that might be that might count okay, I know it says he's back, but I don't know. Like our team's right on the fence here for either actually competing or just absolutely tanking like it's one of the two at this point but our record honestly is not even that terrible so you know we got the trade block here we got certain teams looking into our players but like <laughs> our players aren't even that good like Matsumoto is not growing like he should be and well, to be honest, like, it's hard to get growth in players when the team A is performing poorly and then B, you don't have a lot of other youth to kind of work with them. Like, Winnipeg's pick is actually more valuable right now than our own. I don't understand. <laughs> so, yeah, somehow the Tigers are actually kind of overachieving. And, um,. Well, to be completely honest, like, I'm not, I, I'm kind of concerned how well they're doing, actually. Like, 70 points on the season compared to, there's a lot of teams that don't even have three or four 70-point teams. Then there's our division, where every team except for one has 70 points, so. I don't, I don't know why. This team is performing well. They're still considered hopeful, which is, you know, crazy as far as NHL standards go. Because this team honestly should not have, like, they, they've got no right to be winning games. Yeah, the defense is decent, but even then, like, how, how is this team won games? All right, guys, so as of right now, the way our picks are projecting are not great as far as this franchise goes. Like, by the looks of it, we might be landing around a 11-12 pick. I doubt we're going to win any kind of lottery, and then our pick is supposed to land even further back. Tim Stutzel is the only kind of really solid player there. Uh, Jean-Luc Foudy is pretty good, too, but yeah. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of options here when it comes to actually landing some good players. So, if we look, yeah, overall, like, yeah, defense is good. There's no question about that. It says our top prospects are weak, which I find funny because Matsu, Matsumoto is just like, he's going to be insane in a year or two. There's no question about that. And goaltending is not awful either, but... Yeah, this is, uh, like, <laughs> there's no strength in our forward group, yet we are still winning games. I don't understand the sim engine at all. You can literally put together a rebuilding slash hopeful team, and they will somehow win you games, like, all the time. So, you know, I think we've only got 19 games left in the season, so we're going to sim through them. And somehow, if our team, like, even makes the playoffs or gets even close to that, I'm going to be just laughing because there's, to be honest, there's just no way they should be even close here. And, uh, you know, if they win, like, five games in a row, they actually will make the playoffs. So, yeah, um, as you can see, not a lot of tickets sold or anything. This team is not supposed to be insane for the first couple of years but um 
that's what we're working towards is you know we're going to trade players at the draft we're going to do things like that but somehow this team's kind of searing themselves as far as the lottery goes so yeah just keep winning games boys and uh we're definitely not going to land a lottery pick then so yeah and as you can see raquel has jumped up because he's honestly a better defender than flynn by the looks of it so yeah, Flynn's an offensive defenseman. I'd prefer Raquel because he's also the right-handed shot, so he would pair beautifully with, um, what's his name? He'd pair beautifully with Matsumoto. But I just don't see that happening. So As far as the rest of the elites going here, there might be one or two. Like if this Robert Nylander is actually an elite, holy crap, look out, 6'4 sniper. Um, but, you know, I'm really not expecting crazy kind of players in here at all so Gundler's decent there's a lot of like half decent players here Nick Malik we know from the uh Winnipeg series that he's well I guess Winnipeg the journeyman series that he's gonna turn out to be a decent goalie as far as the rest of the guys go here, we can sort by potential, but there's there's guys that are two bars that, you know, I just, I don't think they're going to become anything special, most of them, so it's, it's worth it to scout them, but in the end, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. <laughs> If you guys remember from the, uh, what series was it? The, um, the Oklahoma City Spartans series, we did have a Vankateshin who turned out to be absolutely insane. So, you know, maybe land another Vankateshin there, but I, I don't know. We will see. How are you guys still in a playoff race? Like, what? I don't understand this game at all. Oh, are you kidding me? Luke Leopold breaks his leg. Yikes. That's a great end to the season for him. Jesus. Okay, so... <laughs> oh my gosh, if we were literally in any other division, we would have made the playoffs. Literally any other division. That is ridiculous. Our team puts up 90 points, like the same as the Jets. But the Jets make the playoffs, we don't. <laughs> oh my gosh, if I had literally gone for uh, Nashville's pick, we would have been just fine. Like, that was a mistake, not trading stall for that earlier. So, yeah, you can see where the decision making plays a role in this series, and. Well, to be completely honest, our team somehow performed really well still. Like, I guess it was all the defense, because our forwards did not play well by any means. Like, Giordano had 58 points on the season, got himself up to a 90. Uh, as far as the forwards go, there's, like, literally no forward growth at all. So that's awesome. Um... Yeah, no, we literally won games with defense in this team, so. Holy crap, Jack Eichel is definitely going to hit a franchise potential if he keeps playing like that. That's insane. Pasternak, Marchand right up there, too. Dreisaitl with 106. Uh, Larkin with 103. Oh my god, Bertuzzi. Wow. Wow. Those are some crazy numbers from a lot of really good players. Ovechkin scored 47. 
Was that the best in the league? Nope, McDavid had 53. Eichel had 51. So McDavid wins the Rocket. Damn. Okay, so that's insane as far as scoring goes. As far as overall goes, I think the Bruins have to have won the Presidents. Yeah, they won the President Trophy. Big surprise there. As far as the defenders go in this league, I believe, I don't know who, I don't know who uh, had the best season, but we will see in a second here. Eric Carlson, that's a, you know, real difficult one to predict, not really. Eric Carlson there with a pretty good season as far as goalies go. Tuka Rask had a lot of wins. Robin Lehner was up there with 34, but not, you know, insane, but he's still pretty good. As far as rookies go, Capo Caco scores 60 points in his rookie year. That's pretty good. Um, Kale McCarr only had... Are you sure about that? Like, are you sure about that? He only had 35 points. Okay. Um, Adam Fox was right in there, too. That's funny. So, yeah, next season, I guess we will get to see um, Jack Hughes got injured and did not have a year at all wow yikes okay yeah i guess next season we will get to see how um what are their names leopold and matsumoto do in the league but we can actually go check out the ahl to see how they did so in the ahl leopold 70 points in 79 games he got injured though so that one kind of sucked matsumoto 38 in 82 nothing ridiculous but not bad still so that sucks that leopold got injured because uh, he was having himself a pretty solid ahl season and by the looks of it the lions did actually make the playoffs so i guess we will uh we will go into more depth on that um next episode because well, yeah, next episode will be, I guess, just the AHL playoffs at this point, and then the draft. That really stings that Leopold's out. That's not just Leopold. Leopold, Hrvik, and Van Veldi, or Van de Velde, sorry. All those guys are out, so not great. We are going to throw Emery back in here. And... Uh, What? 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 I guess we will see if uh, Matsumoto can get things going here or not, because he really is not performing at a great level right now. So I I don't know why why he's playing so bad, but I mean he's not playing terrible. Like his plus minus was decent, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it really wasn't. <laughs> he did not have a great season, so. Yeah, um, for a number one overall pick, Nick Matsumoto is not performing the way we kind of expect him to. Luke Leopold as a second is really playing well. So I guess next episode, the uh, Markham Lions will be taking on the uh, Laval Rockets. Yeah, you know, they got Emerson Adam. They got some decent players in this lineup. Dale Weiss, Jordan Wheel. Yeah, no, they... They got the potential to beat us for sure. Caden Fleury, or Kale Fleury, not Caden Fleury. Kale Fleury, their defense is good. Their goaltending is good. Caden Primo is in there. Yeah, um, they got a better lineup than us for sure. So that's just, you know, that's just the difference between having draft picks coming up for a while versus be it an expansion team and not really having a lot of depth to start with so 
yeah, next episode we will get into the playoffs and the draft. Uh, unfortunately, the Lions finish right in a spot where they're not going to land a lottery pick, but they are going to uh, they are going to uh, miss the playoffs. So you gotta love it. You gotta love how the point systems and divisions work here. So. Yeah, you can see Montreal finished 7th in the league and got chanced on the division. That sucks. We finished 14th. 14th in the league and we missed the playoffs. Like the Red Wings down at 18th and the Devils at 17th got into the playoffs. But we missed the playoffs. Yikes. Big yikes there, okay. So yeah, just ridiculous how that went, but that is going to be it for this second episode. To be honest, a little disappointing with the way things turned out there, but you know, things still got done. Um, I guess we've kind of figured out how this team's gonna look in the future with the way, uh, <laughs> the way everything has turned out here. And you know, we're gonna have to trade players we're gonna be making a lot of trades to obtain draft picks and do that kind of thing but it's really confusing the way everything's turned out here so that is gonna be it for me if you guys are new to the channel or are liking this series with the Hamilton Tigers then go down below uh, subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video and uh, feel free to comment constructive criticism is appreciated and uh, it helps me improve my channel so that is going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya!